What is up, guys? Welcome for our UPA offseason number two draft recap. Uh, a lot of you guys probably won't know what the UPA is. It's the league that started me off on YouTube, actually, created by Link a Little Bigness or Drew. I mentioned this in my uh, my response video to J Specs. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, definitely go watch that. But uh, this is the league that, like I said before, got me started on YouTube and. Uh, I pretty much owe everything uh, to them and to the NBA, to, to JAR and everybody. It's those two groups of people. Everything that has happened to me is uh, has had a part in, like, they, they've been part of it, basically. So, when they asked if I wanted to be part of the second offseason, because we already had one, I didn't upload for that one. But when they asked if I wanted to be part of the second one, I said, you know what, yeah, let's go for it. Let's do it. And uh, it'll give me an, another draft league for Gen 7, so that's awesome. Now, we voted on what kind of format we wanted to do. I don't know if there's a mention of it in the title or in the thumbnail. I haven't made either one yet, so uh, if you already saw what it is, then great. If not, we decided to do Doubles OU. If you don't know what Doubles OU is, it's basically VGC but with six mons instead of four. So you bring all six mons to the game, and it's 2v2. It's doubles. That's essentially it's it's what it's called. So that's how it works. And uh, just to give you a little idea of how this uh, this league was, the draft was gonna go down. Drew pulled out a list of a bunch of Uber Pokemon and left out a bunch, and then said, "Guys, you each you each get one ban, <laughs> and if you don't use it by uh, midnight tomorrow or whatever, uh, then your ban is lost." There were only three Pokemon banned, guys. <laughs> I believe it was Mega Salamence, which is understandable. Um, Tapu Lele, also understandable. And then, I don't know, there was also Whimsicott, which I can't understand. And Jirachi, which to some extent is understandable. But if you see the list of all of the things that were not banned for this draft, you would freak out. And not to mention that it's only an eight-man draft, so we only have eight coaches. We're going to be playing round robin for seven weeks, and uh, then we're going to face off in, uh, in playoffs, basically. And uh, let me tell you guys, I was so happy when they announced that I had the first pick. I wasn't even expecting it. I didn't know when we were starting our draft, and all of a sudden I got tagged, and I'm like, oh wow, I'm on the I'm on the clock. Okay, let me see what's available. And. Uh, I tweeted this out actually if you have if you don't follow me on Twitter check it out in the description down below But my team is actually probably the best team that I have ever drafted Period better than my NPL miners team and that's because of how many broken things are on it So let's get right into this. I've been talking for three minutes already the first Pokemon that we decided to pick up Should be coming up on screen now is Mega Kangaskhan. Yes, that's right guys Mega Kangaskhan is allowed for this offseason uh, in doubles and if you guys don't know Mega Kangaskhan in doubles it's an extremely viable mon it's not as powerful as it is in singles because uh, it has to worry about two uh, Pokemon targeting it down however because of this thing's bulk its ability parental bond and its great attack stat and very good speed stat this thing is a monster let's look at some of its moves real quick I, I already made sets for all of these just so I could Pretty much pinpoint some of the notable moves right away so the first one we have here is fake out fake out in doubles is essential if you do not have a fake out user on your team you're losing out on momentum every single turn uh fake out is so so valuable because it pretty much stalls a mon for a turn they can't move so it turns it into a singles battle for one turn they can protect on the fake out and they won't take damage but they're still useless for that turn. So that's part of what ma makes Mega a Kangaskhan an amazing lead option and even an amazing late game option, honestly. Because it gets access to priority like Sucker Punch. And Sucker Punch hits twice. Now because of the Sucker Punch nerf, as well as the Parental Bond nerf, it actually only hits for uh, one quarter instead of one half of the original damage now. Uh, Sucker Punch is not as useful as it was. Uh, Mega Kangaskhan actually has base 60 special attack, which is usable with moves that hit for four times effective, da effective damage, excuse me. And because this thing is a, uh, a normal type, it gets outstanding coverage. Uh, things like Fire Blast and Flamethrower, Ice Beam, uh, gets Surf as well, uh, gets access to Thunderbolt, pretty much everything you can imagine 
that a, a normal type would get. So, uh, also a very usable stat. And uh, also the fact that this thing... The Seismic Toss wasn't nerfed, guys. It still hits twice, and it still hits for 100 damage on each hit. So that means, no matter what, as long as you do not have over... I think it's base 95 HP with leftovers, you are getting two-hit KO'd every single time by this Mega Kangaskhan. Now let's look at its bulk real quick. We have base 105 HP with base 100 defense and base 100 special defense. Uh, this makes for a very good wish passer because it has great HP. Uh, it's able to set up subs that aren't bro broken by Seismic Toss, by the way, because of this HP stat. If you see, if I take this attack off for a second, you just have to get to 401, basically. And your sub is never broken, so it can be used that way. Uh, but its attack stat is where it shines. Look at this 383, paired with 299 speed, and the fact that it gets wish support for the rest of the team is really solid. I like this Pokemon. I I'm going to love using it uh, throughout the, in the entire league. Uh, I can't wait to bring it to games because I haven't really gotten a chance to use Mega Kangaskhan since the beginning of X and Y. So, yeah, this is going to be really cool. And uh, I can't wait. So, yeah, that's that's the first Bond we decided to pick up. So, you might be saying, okay, well, you got Mega Kangaskhan. Uh, you were first pick. So, when it came back around to you, there were probably not too many broken things left. You're wrong <laughs> because, like I said, guys... There were so many broken Pokemon available this draft, and there's one specifically that I feel I should have taken. Mints got it, and I didn't get it, and I realize now that it's probably the best Pokemon, period, uh, in doubles, uh, and that's Zygarde, 100%. And there are two of them, by the way, because there's Zygarde 50 and Zygarde 10, and both of them can go 100%. So that is extremely scary when you think about it, um, that two people in the league have Zygarde forms that hit 100%. But, I got a really, really good Pokemon <laughs> that outspeeds uh, Zygarde by one point, has the same four times weakness, and is also known as one of the hardest hitters in the game with its stab because of sheer force, because of the life orb boost, and that's Landorus Incarnate. Uh, yeah, that's right. We got Lando I, round two, last pick of round two, might I add. Uh, with Sheer Force and Life Orb, this thing's uh, secondary uh, effect moves hit extremely hard, that being Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Rock Slide, other moves like Psychic, uh, Focus Blast. I can go on and on and on with the number of moves that this thing gets in terms of coverage um, that hit with its Sheer Force ability, but I won't uh, because you guys can probably see most of them on the screen as I'm scrolling through them. Uh, but this thing is amazing. It can even set up Stealth Rockers. I do not want it as my primary Stealth Rock setter, though, because that's a waste of a perfectly good Landorus eye. I just wanted a... <coughs> excuse me. I just wanted a uh, Pokemon off the ground early uh, that could also use Rock Slide uh, and Flinch. So if it wasn't going to be Lando T, it was definitely going to be Lando I. Lando T was taken round two, I believe, at the first pick of round two by Drew. Uh, little bigness. And uh, we got it. Uh, we got this form uh, round uh, round two as the last pick. So this is really cool. You can even run a Calm Mind set. Uh, I neglected to put some moves on this set because I ran out of space. But Rock Polish is a set. Calm Mind, like I said. Uh, knock Off. It gets access to so many things. Protect is actually... I put it on one of the Mons on one of the sets. I can't remember which one now, but... Uh, Protect is actually extremely valuable in doubles because it means that you become invulnerable uh, Yeah, invulnerable for one turn uh, If your opponent decides to double target that slot They're losing momentum on that turn and you get a free hit off essentially with your other Pokemon so uh, Protect is gonna be extremely valuable throughout the entirety of this offseason and uh, I'm really curious to see how people are gonna utilize it now Like I said this thing's offenses are almost equal 125 attack and 115 special attack and it's actually surprising because this thing's uh, main set is its special set, but that's because Earth Power gets a boost from Sheer, po sheer Force while Earthquake doesn't. Uh, and Earth Power is a, is a single target move. However, Earthquake, with that base 125 attack, being a spread move means that I can hit multiple targets all at once. Sludge Wave does the same thing. There are a couple of moves uh, among my team that you guys will see that have multi-target hitting. And that is extremely important in doubles, because if you can hit both of your opponent's Pokemon with one of your Pokemon, and essentially take them both out if they're weakened, uh, you save the other Pokemon for, let's say, Wish Passing. Like, I can set up a Wish with my Mega Kangaskhan as my Landorus kills both Pokemon with an Earthquake or a Sludge Wave. So, that's extremely important. Uh, and I already mentioned Protect. The number of sets that this thing can run is ridiculous, not to mention that it also can be running a Z Stone, uh, Z Crystal, excuse me. So I can power up any one of these moves uh, at whim on any given week. 
So this is great. Also, I did want something with U-Turn early because U-Turn and Volt Switch are extremely good in doubles as well. Being able to get momentum into something, uh, to put something into that slot that will be able to resist a hit that is super effective against Landorus is extremely important. So you guys are going to see I pick up an amazing defensive core to back up Landorus uh, if I want to run U-Turn on it. So, And I also pick up a couple of Volt Switchers and U-Turners along the way. So you guys will see that as well. Anyway, moving on to the next one. Round 3 I had first pick. Uh, coming back on the wheel, and I picked what I believe to be the most threatening Pokemon in doubles. I believe this thing is banned in the new doubles format because of how broken it is, because of what it's capable of doing. I knew I wanted a Steel type, and I knew I wanted something that could set up and just sweep an opponent's entire team. And there's only one Pokemon that I could think of at that very given moment that was Steel and did that. And that Pokemon is Magearna. Now, you guys have probably seen Magearna in Draft League format already. Uh, if you've been following a little bit of the scenes, like the NPL. Uh, and Magearna is really, really good. But what makes it even better in, uh, in Draft League format, uh, not in Draft League format, in doubles format, is this ability. Soul Heart. Now, you guys probably know it as a type of Moxie, but it's better than that. Read what it says. This Pokemon's special attack is raised by one stage when another Pokemon faints. That means not only your opponent's Pokemon, but yours as well. So if Magirna's partner on the field gets knocked out, then its special attack goes up by one. And the reason I put the shift gear set here is because if you're setting up a shift gear, as one of your Pokemon is going down, and at the same time taking an opponent's Pokemon with it, for example, like if I had Destiny Bond, which I don't on the team, unfortunately, but if I did, then I would be able to uh, essentially get a plus two, plus two. two. Two Dragon Dances for special attack in one turn. That's insane. Not to mention, one of this thing's biggest weaknesses is ground. And the fact that ground type moves, well, not all ground type moves, but essentially Earthquake, the most common one, is split into two, and because of this thing's great bulk with base 80, base 115, base 115, means that I can probably take a spread earthquake and set up a shift gear for free, outspeed the ground type on the following turn, knock it out, or I can run protect if I want to protect this thing for a turn so I can get, have my other Pokemon give it the soul heart boost uh, by getting a kill and then just set up on the next turn and sweep an opponent. And this thing's coverage is really good, guys. Uh, I have Flash Cannon, Thunderbolt, and uh, Shadow Ball right here. It gets its Fairy Stab in Dazzling Gleam and Fleur Cannon, which is essentially Draco Meteor for Fairy. Grass Knot, Focus Blast, Ice Beam. It can even be run physical with a Shift Gear set with Iron Head. Uh, what else does it get? Uh, Aurora Beam, that's not useful. Um, it gets a move called Crafty Shield, which protects allies from status uh, for a turn which can be useful, uh, and I believe it also gets uh, another move that's useful in uh, doubles, and I can't remember what it is right now. But anyway, um, this thing is, is ridiculous. I can even run an Iron Defense set with Calm Mind, because uh, it gets Calm Mind, right? Yep, there we go. So I can, I can run this thing any kind of setup I want. It even gets fighting uh, coverage, which is really cool, between Focus Blast and Aura Sphere. It doesn't have to rely on Focus Blast if it doesn't want to, and don't forget, I can run a Z Crystal on this. I can run it on any one of my mons. There's not only one Mon that's limited to it, so this thing is a threat like no other. I won't go into any more detail about it because I don't want to reveal too much of what I'm planning to do with it. But uh, yeah, look out for this thing to be probably a kill leader uh, this uh, this off season. I'll keep you guys updated on how many kills it actually gets, but yeah, that's going to be uh, Magirna for you, and uh, I can't wait to use this thing in doubles. It's going to be so fun. Anyway, moving on to the next Pokemon, because Magearna has that ground weakness and so does Kangaskhan, I didn't want to rely on Landorus as my only ground check, uh, because Hidden Power Ice would destroy it. So I needed to make sure that I had something else that I could switch into ground type moves. Uh, also give off a little bit of status, and like I said before, I was trying to create uh, a good Volt Turn core. Magearna is also a Volt Switcher, if you guys didn't know, but I definitely wanted Electric Stab. So, I decided to pick up a Rotom form, and that is Rotom Wash. Now, Rotom Wash couples with these guys extremely well. It's able to burn physical threats that threaten Magearna, and it's able to uh, knock out opposing ground types, like I said, that also hurt Magearna, uh, gain Volt Switch momentum, 
Uh, does this thing get Destiny Bond? I just want to make sure. No, it doesn't. Okay, cool. Uh, so I put a couple of moves on here. Protect is all, always an option, like I said before. Screens are also an option. Probably won't be running that, though. But this thing is a great, great uh, physical wall. Uh, even a special wall. It's it's physical and special defense are even. Its HP is where it lacks, but Pain Split kind of makes up for that. Uh, and Citrus Berry is the item of choice uh, in doubles for Rotom Wash. Uh, just because its HP goes down... Uh, gradually and when it gets right below 50 it's gonna go right back up to 75 or just below 75 rather and that is really really useful especially like I said in doubles where games are going by really quickly you very rarely have stally games uh, because things are just attacking each other and because it's two on two mons are going down faster so you hardly have games that go past like 25 turns maximum uh, you guys are going to see when we actually get into the games, but uh, I definitely wanted Rotom Wash. Like I said, I wanted a ground check. Uh, I wanted a bird check as well because I didn't want Magirna to have to take Brave Birds. And at the moment, I didn't have another good bird check, so Rotom is definitely that role. Uh, I didn't want to get like caught off guard by a Staraptor or like a random Talon Flame, for all I know. Um, but yeah, so this thing is, uh, is great. It gets a couple of cool little options as well. That I might have to test out at some point. Again, don't want to give it away too much, but Rotom is pretty much Rotom. There's nothing more to say about it. Uh, it gets the coverage that it gets, and it's great at doing what it does. So, that's that. Moving on. I think, <laughs> I think this round. Uh, round 5, once again, I was first pick. I, it went last pick round 4, first pick round 5. I believe that I got probably the best Pokemon in the game to support Magearna. And... I also, I didn't even know it, but I was creating a regenerator core in the process, uh, and I, I didn't know I had finished it until somebody brought it up. And I wanted either this Pokemon or Clefable because of their ability to redirect moves. Moves like Follow Me make Magearna so good because not only do they take away the focus from Magearna for the turn, allowing it to set up shift gears, they also inhibit um, potential to knock out the Pokemon using follow me uh, and that will give Magearna the soul heart boost as a result the Pokemon that I decided to get as uh, the beginning of a fire water grass core that never gets finished uh, with Rotom Wash I got Amoongus so what makes Amoongus so good is this move right here rage powder it's essentially follow me, but only Amoongus, uh, other Pokemon get it too, but Amoongus is the best user of it because of its amazing bulk. As you guys can see, base 114 HP coupled with 70 and, uh, and 80 in its defenses. You can really run any kind of mix set with this thing, it's really good. Uh, I put Black Sludge on here because, once again, item of, of preference, but Rage Powder is so, so good because for single target moves, it just redirects them and it's like, nope, come here. Uh, don't hit my Magearna, don't hit my Landorus, don't hit my Kangaskhan. Like, imagine if you can't hit any one of those three Mons for a whole turn. That's really scary because they get to do whatever the heck they want. And, uh, yeah, there's there's a little bit of trouble dealing with, with that once you're up against it. So, uh, redirection was something that I definitely wanted. Uh, also, a great clear Smogger if something's trying to set up in front of me. Uh, synthesis to keep longevity. It also gets Regenerator. Of course, I didn't put this on here, but Regenerator is the big thing. Uh, it's that it can switch out when it's threatened and gain back 30% of its health. Uh, protect, again, we mentioned this so many times, but yeah, there's that. And uh, yeah, this thing gets great uh, great special move pool, like Energy Ball if I want to run that. Uh, Giga Drain, of course. Uh, grass Knot for heavier stuff. That's basically its grass coverage. It gets Sludge Bomb. I put Clear Smog on there, but Sludge Bomb works too. Uh, toxic. Like, there's, there's really, really good stuff on here, uh, and I can't wait to use this mod. It's, it was considered, uh, S-Rank in Doubles OU for Gen 6, and there's a really good reason. It's because it's really good at doing what it does, even better than Rotom does, actually. Uh, move redirection, especially on a Pokemon that can just switch out and get back that health that it just lost, is amazing. So, Amoongus is, uh, probably the best partner to Magearna in the game. They're both weak to fire. But like I said before, if you're knocking out Amoongus with a fire move, you're giving Magearna the, the Soul Heart boost. And that's really scary because, like, this thing can run Steelium Z uh, at plus one. Its Flash Cannon is going to do so much to fire types. It doesn't care because that, that, that move goes up to, like, base 160, I think it is. Base 160 at plus one with 394 special attack. 
don't tell me that's not scary, especially after rocks. Speaking of rocks, um, I didn't want Lanaris Eye as my only rock setter. I wanted to make sure that, that I had something else. And a lot of people missed out that certain things hadn't been banned. And I was like, what is everybody doing? Why does, why does nobody see these Pokemon? And I'm like, I think I can wait. I think I can wait. I think I can wait. This is coming to round six right now. And I was the last pick again. And I saw these Pokemon. These these four Pokemon. And I'm like, why does nobody see these? Why has nobody even made mention of them? And why am I going to be the first one to pick up one of these? And I think I got the best one for the format, in my, opi in my opinion. I needed a Hazard Setter. Not only Stealth Rocks, potentially Spikes. I needed something that could hit as hard as all hell and there's one pokemon that stuck out to me like a sore thumb and that is deoxys attack yes ladies and gentlemen deoxys attack is allowed in this league now my tweet only showed the first uh, five pokemon this was the sixth one we picked up deoxys attack round six do you realize what this is this is insane look at these offenses i understand the defenses are, are crap but focus ash you can't kill me in one hit you need a multi-hit move, or you need to double target. And what if I protect on that turn? You're going to give my other Pokemon a free turn? Awesome. Great, I'll take it. And this speed stat, look at this. 351 with 60 investment, no positive nature. <laughs> do, you, do you guys want to see what this thing hits at max? Let me just show you. 438. That rivals Mega Alakazam. That's the same speed stat as Mega Alakazam. And it's almost got, it's, it's got a little bit of a higher special attack stat too. It hits 459, but not only that, its physical attack is also amazing. And if you look at this thing's move pool, I needed more mons that could use Z-moves really well. And this thing is amazing. Also, um, I was kind of low on priority at this point. I only had Kangaskhan, and I wanted to make sure that I had other priority, and I knew that this thing got extreme speed. So I was like, you know what? With that base 180 attack, extreme speed is going to hurt. So let me get that. Let me make sure that I can revenge things that would otherwise sweep me. Uh, and Extreme Seed is amazing for that. It's it's kind of the reason I got Entei in the NPL Miners. So I needed to make sure that I had something like that. But look at this thing's coverage. Just, uh, just look at it for a second. Like, ignore Avalanche, but Dark Pulse, Drain Punch, Energy Ball, Fire Punch, Flash Cannon, Focus Blast, Ice Beam. Does it get Thunderbolt? Probably, right? Yeah, there's Thunderbolt. Uh, it gets Thunder Wave. It gets, it's a fast Haunter. That's always cool. Uh, it gets Zen Headbutt. The big move for me is Psycho Boost, because Psycho Boost is, a, is essentially Draco Meteor. It's got 90 accuracy, so like, again, Draco Meteor, but it's base 140. And coming off of this special attack stat, it hits, wow, it hits harder than I think Al Mega Alexam and Psychic Terrain with its Psychic. So that's insane uh, to think about. But uh, yeah, there's that. Uh, do I really have to go through all this coverage, guys? Meteor Mash, uh, <laughs> Rock Slide, another Rock Slider, that's cool. Uh, another seismic toss user user uh, so this thing can hit for 200 dam uh, not 200 but 100 damage no matter what if it wants to shadow ball uh, signal beam if it needs to hit quad uh, quad week to uh, to bug uh, there's, there's just so many options icy wind which is an amazing option in doubles but I will get to that a little bit later with my last pick uh, I'll show you guys that skill swap is cool uh, pressure's not cool <laughs> there's poison jab like this thing can hit anything that it wants honestly uh, it gets gravity, which is really cool for Landorus, because then its earth powers hit everything. There's just so much you can do. So, so much you can do with this thing. Uh, and with these offenses, like like I said before, I just wanted something that hits extremely hard. And Deoxys Attack, there's nothing better than Deoxys Attack. It's the hardest hitter in the game. Nothing has this combined offense. It's amazing. Honestly, like 360 total for its offenses. Name me one other Pokemon that gets that. Name it to me in the comment section down below. I, I dare you to find one that hits 360 with its combined offenses. I doubt you can find one. I think it's the one. <laughs> I, I'm almost 100% sure this has the most. But anyway, that wraps it up for the first six. I'm just going to pause it. Actually, well, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail. Uh, this was round six. So round seven, once again, I was first picking. And there was a very, very specific mon that I knew I wanted on my team. By the way, guys, I didn't mention this. I never got sniped. Not once. I did do some sniping though, and this next pick is actually a snipe uh, on somebody I really don't mind sniping, honestly, because he's uh, he's beaten me a couple of times at this point, and I wanted uh, to have a little bit of an upper hand. And one thing that my move, my my team, excuse me, one thing that my team was lacking 
It already had a move redirection. It already had hazard setting. It already had sweepers. Uh, it already had a fake out pressure. Um, but I was lacking Intimidate. Intimidate is really good in doubles because against physical attackers, like let's say your opponent has two physical attackers out, Intimidate lowers both their attacks instantly. So it's one of the best abilities to have in doubles OU or just doubles in general. So I, need, I knew I needed a, uh, a, an Intimidator. If I could get another fake out user in the process and something that blocks double hitting moves, multi-target moves such as Earthquake, uh, such as Sludge Wave, Heat Wave, anything like that, Discharge, I think Discharge hits both. Um, if I could get something that would do that and make sure that Magirna is protected as it's trying to set up, that would be amazing. Another great partner to Magirna, and that partner is Hitmontop. And Hitmontop is one of the, it, it's actually really highly ranked in doubles, but I, guys, I would never, ever, ever draft this thing in singles. Ever. I hate this Pokemon with a passion in singles. People that draft it to get a rapid spinner, I'm just like, go without a rapid spinner. Honestly, you don't need that because this thing is a liability on every single team. It's a pure liability because look at its offenses. 95 and 35. Let's compare that to Deoxys Attack for a second. <laughs> no, let's not because that's it's, it's really not worth doing. But in doubles, the ability to fake out. We already covered that with Mega Kangaskhan. Close combat, great stab. It also gets Bullet Punch. It gets Sucker Punch. It gets uh, quite a bit of priority, actually. So that's really, really good. It gets Rock Slide. We talked about that earlier. Uh, it also gets Pursuit. That's cool. Uh, high Jump Kick is a more powerful uh, fighting type move that doesn't lower your defenses. Uh, it gets good options. It's not a bad Mon. I just fi find it really, really underwhelming in singles. But in doubles, what makes this thing amazing is this right here. These two moves. Wide Guard and Quick Guard. If you don't know what these do, Wide Guard protects allies from multi-target hits for the turn. That includes Hitmontop itself. So, my opponent goes for Earthquake and, and Sludge Wave on a turn, for example, for whatever reason, and I click Wide Guard, I'm not hit by either one on either one of my Mons. So, once again, Magirna's, one of Magirna's biggest weaknesses being uh, ground is covered by him on top. You want to go for Earthquake? You're not going to hit either one. Plus, I intimidated, I probably intimidated the Earthquake user by coming in with him on top. So, now their, their Earthquakes hit for even less. So that's really, really good. Uh, that's, that's really the biggest reasons, guys. Uh, I put Red Card on here because him on top can come in on a predicted attack into its slot, intimidate, and get switched right back out to get another intimidate off later. And give me a switch out into a Pokemon that's more favorable to be in that position in the given matchup. So, red card is very useful with Hitmontop for that reason. You can run a lot of different items, though. Leftovers is always an option, of course. Uh, Rocky Helmet. I still have the option to run a Z-Crystal. Never forget that. Uh, damage Reducing Berry. Eject Button if I want to get a threat out. Uh, so, so many different things. Like, doubles is so diverse because of everything that you can do. And especially when you know your opponent's team coming into the game. I think it's going to create for very, very awkward... Uh, like, scenarios between Mons, and I think if you were to bring, like, a drafted, uh, doubles OU or doubles counter team for draft league format to a regular doubles OU game, nothing would work, because everything has to be so specific and so down to the wire, uh, but him on top accomplishes its role so, so well, it gives me a secondary fake out user, I absolutely wanted that. Leading off with two, like, with two extremely powerful, well, not extremely powerful Mons, but leading off with Hitmontop plus Mega Kangaskhan is free fake out central. Like, that's just free fake outs all around for everybody. Uh, that's, that's clean damage. That's easy damage. And I get off an Intimidate for free. Like, if, if Kangaskhan had Intimidate, that would just be, like, the icing on the cake. But it doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, but like I said, this thing gets great priority options. It even gets spin. If I don't want to get, um... Hazard stacked on I can always run rapid spin on any given week and that's uh, that's an option from for him on top So that's great. I love this Pokemon. <clears throat> Let's move on. I did mention before that Amoongus was the first part of a regenerator core I didn't expect to get this month. I didn't know what to pick in round eight Once again, this was my wheel round eight round nine last pick first pick. I knew one of the two mons that I wanted I wanted a secondary intimidate user, but that was round nine. I knew that I wanted to get something powerful, something usable, and something that I didn't have yet for 
round eight. I look through everything, and there's only one Pokemon that stuck out at me, and it just so happened to be Regenerator. Also, I was lacking a certain speed tier that I really, really wanted. And sorry about that, guys. I'm just gonna pause real quick. Gotta learn to unplug that when I uh, when I finish work. I actually work from home. That was my phone going off for some reason because it's plugged into my landline. But anyway, getting back to what I was saying, uh, I needed a um, a Pokemon that could. Uh, hit hard, accomplish a couple of rolls that I didn't have yet, also be my primary Z uh, crystal user. I didn't have a Mon that I could pinpoint as like, okay, this thing is definitely going to be running a Z crystal more often than not. Uh, and I just so happened to complete a regenerator core and get a speed tier that I didn't have before. So, with the 8th pick, the Montreal Habsol select Tornadus Therian. Now, you don't expect a Mon like Tornadus T to go in round 8, but again, let's, let's, let's go over this one more time, guys. There were so many broken things that people lost sight of, uh, like, really good Mons because they were so focused on what was broken and completing their cores, like Firewater Grass and getting, like, Volt Absorbers and uh, Lightning Rod and Water Absorb and stuff like that. I was just focusing on getting every essential for a doubles team, and if you see here, this Pokemon gets Tailwind. Now, I heavily debated between Tornadus Therian and its regular form, but Tornadus T stuck out to me because of its speed stat. Not because of Regenerator, but because of its speed stat. I wanted something that outsped base 115s. And if you saw my team, the only Pokemon that did that up until now was Deoxys Attack. I didn't want to get caught off guard by a base 115 Pokemon that has priority and instantly kills um, Deoxys Attack. For example, Mega Absol. I didn't want to be put in that position where I can't outspeed this Pokemon and it's just going to run through me. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, and that's it. Game's over, guys. No, I wanted something that could outspeed base 115s. And Tornadus T can do that just fine because of this amazing base 121 speed stat. Also gets very good offenses of 100 and 110. And let's just look at this thing's coverage real quick. So we covered Deoxys, attack, uh, Deox Deoxys Attacks coverage, excuse me. Uh, but this thing gets Dark Pulse. Extra Sensory, Focus Blast, Grass Knot, Hammer Arm, Heat Wave. By the way, Heat Wave, Sludge Wave, multi hitting moves. Another big, big thing for this thing. Uh, gets Psychic, Knock Off. Like, uh, do I really have to name all this for you guys? I don't. I don't think I do. I think you you can see it just fine. And this thing also gets a really, really cool move that I'm not gonna mention uh, because I want to use it to catch somebody off guard at some point. But it's really, really good in doubles. And, uh, if you know what it is, uh, like, hit me up on Twitter, DM me, and tell me you figured it out, but this, uh, this Pokemon is a great Z-Crystal user. I put Fighting Z on here because Focus Blast misses a lot, and I wanted something that, uh, could make Focus Blast not miss while also giving it a base 190, I believe, power, so... That's, uh, that's really good. Like, it can, it can break through steel types that, or rock types that would otherwise wall it very, very nicely with, with this coverage right here. Uh, Regenerator. U-turn. Beautiful combination with Rotom, with, uh, Amoongus. This just creates an amazing core. I absolutely love this core. I wanted Flying Stab as well. That was something, uh, that was kind of important to me. I wanted to be able to hit Grass types, which my team couldn't do too well just yet. Uh, outside of, like, Mega Kangaskhan, Deoxys Attack. Uh, I wanted something that could really hit uh, grass types for super effective damage. There are some very threatening grass types allowed, such as to a Tapu Bulu. Uh, Tangrowth pretty much hard walls my team up until now, so I definitely needed something uh, that could check all of those. And uh, Tornadus T fits that role just fine. I love it. Can't wait to use it. And again, round eight, guys. Round freaking eight. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so that's Torn T. Now, I did mention before that I wanted to complete an Intimidate Core. And there was something that my team was really, really lacking. If you haven't noticed, up until now, the only Stealth Rockers that I got were Landorus Eye and Deoxys Attack. And if I'm going to waste Stealth Rock, like a Stealth Rock slot, on Deoxys Attack or Lando Eye, that already more than likely should be running Protect in most cases, maybe not Deoxys Attack, but definitely Lando Eye, then I'm losing out on so many different coverage options. I needed something else that could set up rocks reliably. If it got intimidated at the same time, great. And another thing that my team had a little bit of trouble with was uh, bulky psychics. I had knockoff on everything, but I didn't have stab dark type coverage. So I needed something that could hit those hard. Giving myself a secondary ground type also didn't help. Uh, didn't didn't help. Didn't hurt. 
Uh, so I went with Crocodile for round 9. Now this thing I definitely wanted, absolutely 100%, because uh, again, the Stealth Rocks, uh, the Taunting, it's another Z Crystal user because of its amazing coverage. You guys don't know this, but this thing gets like Dragon Pulse, Focus Blast, Grass Knot, like look at this. It's, it's crazy, it actually gets insane coverage that's almost never used. And pair that with, uh, with a decent special attack stat usable of 65, especially if you like max it out, give it a, a Z move, it's definitely usable. Uh, great physical moves as well, a foul play is very usable, uh, Fire Fang. Uh, it gets uh, Roar, uh, which can be useful with spike stacking if I want to run that on one given week. Uh, this thing is, is very, very good. and. Um, I mean, there's not much to say about it. I, I wanted a second Intimidator. I wanted to be able to lead with Hitmontop Crocodile sometimes and just be able to lower things attacks. Uh, and if I have to switch out into special walls, then I will. But otherwise, I'm good. So yeah, that's uh, that's Crocodile for you. It also gets Snarl. That's something to notice. Um, while it's also while it's able to intimidate, it's also able to lower uh, special attack at the same time with this move. I uh, wanted a good Snarl user. I think I have one or two others on my team, uh, but it's Stab Snarl. It's definitely usable. Um, but yeah, like wh what else is there to say about this thing? It's it's really, it's it's useful. <laughs> that's that's all I can say. It's useful. Uh, I put Pursuit on here because, like I said, I wanted to be able to check uh, bulky Psychics. If they want to switch out on me, they get Pursuit Trapped. Uh, they get lowered to the point where other threats can knock them out. Uh, Psycho Boost from Deoxys Attack, let's, uh, for example. I know it's a Psychic type move, but even bulky Psychics aren't taking that too well. So uh, that's uh, Crocodile for you. It's, uh, it's a really cool mon, and I'm glad I have it. Now, the last Pokemon. The last Pokemon, guys. Uh, we're almost at 40 minutes. I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible, but I really want to go into depth about this Pokemon because there was one specific thing that I wanted on this team. And... There was only one Pokemon that could accomplish that. Um, properly, I would say. There's only one Pokemon. And I've been prepping with this Pokemon for about four weeks now. And it has done remarkable work. It has done such good work. You guys haven't seen it because it's not my prep. It's prep for... Uh, I'm assistant coaching one of my friends in his league. And he has this Pokemon. And paired with the right threats... This thing is so useful. Um, my, my, my friend has uh, Porygon Z, Tapu Koko, uh, and a couple of other really big threats on his team. And if you give them Light Screen and Reflect Support, they're even better. And if you can give them Light Screen and Reflect Support in one turn... Whoo! <laughs> Yo, man. Th just think about Magirna behind an Aurora Veil for a second. Just, just think about that with its already amazing bulk. Give it max HP, max special attack. Give it shift gear. Give it three coverage moves that run through your opponent. Now your opponent cannot touch you. You're behind an Aurora Veil. <laughs> You're taking like 25 from Earthquakes. <laughs> it's ridiculous, dude. This is so, so useful for the team, for all my offensive threats. We mentioned Kangaskhan. It can run Wish. It can heal itself up very easily. And with its already really good bulk, put it behind an Aurora Veil. Same thing with Lando Eye. It's got good bulk. Do you want me to go back to it? Let me show you just... Let me just show you real quick what Lando Eye has as bulk. This is usable. 89, 90, 80. Very usable. Rotom becomes unkillable. <laughs> Amoongus, unkillable. Like, I have such good bulky offense. Great priority. And as my last pick, I knew nobody would see this thing. But as my last pick, I picked up a Pokemon that could use multi-hitting ice with Blizzard. Secondary Fairy Stab. I already had Magirna, but I wanted something else because Magirna's Fairy Stab is not the best. Its alternate coverage is really good, as and its Steel Stab. And I get Icy Wind. We mentioned Icy Wind before. This is the last one I picked up. It's able to slow down opposing teams. Not to mention it also gets Encore, if I want to be that guy. Uh, I, it gets Freeze Dry to hit Water Types. I don't deal with Water Types too, too well. I don't have a Grass Type or an Electric Type. I can just Freeze Dry them if I want to. Things like Gastronon and uh, Mantine and Mantike, because that's that's something that somebody drafted. With all these Deoxys forms running around, somebody got Mantike. I'm not gonna say who it is because I don't wanna I don't wanna ruin his name or anything. But uh, yeah, so a little Nine Tails. It also gets really good coverage. It gets uh, Toxic. Uh, it's just it gets Charm. Charm is actually usable, by the way, guys. Charm is actually usable because it lowers your opponent's attack by two. It's basically a pseudo intimidate. It's really like you might want to even run a uh, a charm set one week because it, it it's it's actually useful 
in doubles. Things that aren't usually useful, like safeguard. Uh, and, and like I said, uh, what did I say? <laughs> charm? Yeah, that's it, charm. Um, all of these moves, moves that typically are not good, that you never see in singles. Things like wide guard and, and quick guard. Things like tailwind, you don't see that often. Uh, things like snarl, they don't come up that, that often. But in doubles, they're very, very good because they are able to hit two Pokemon at once. They are able to accomplish um, partner support roles that other moves can't. If you're just attacking and switching in a game of singles, it's basically, does my opponent have coverage for me? And if they don't, then they can't hit me. If they do, I'll switch out into something that walls them. Whereas in doubles, it's, does my opponent have coverage for either one of my mons? If so, which one do I switch out? And do I protect with the other one on this turn? If I do that, do they get up a nasty plot? Do they get up a swords dance or a rock polish? Do they get to go for a shift gear? Like, there's so much to think about in doubles. And the more options you have, the better it is. And I think I've equipped myself with pretty much every option. I'm going to show you... No, I'm not going to show you the rest of the teams. I was about to, but I'm not going to show you the rest of the teams, guys. But in, on, in all honesty... Out of the eight teams, I can confidently say that there is only one team that comes close to ours, and it's Mens. Immortal Mens has a very, very scary team, and I think it's a very close second to ours, but undoubtedly, in my mind, I have the best team. And if I don't go at least 6-1 and one in this league, I won't be happy, because, like... Look at this team! How how can you not go six and one with this? Look at these threats! Like, what? Like, I can't even shift this up right now. But like, look look at this. <laughs> Deoxys attack, Mega Kangaskhan. Like, I, I I won't keep like tuning my own horn about my team. But you you guys can clearly see the synergy that this team has. Uh, it's got a, a couple of minor flaws. Like I said before, I don't have an electric or a grass type. Big deal. Most of my Pokemon get electric or grass coverage. I can use Z moves to cover for that. Like I'm so well equipped, uh, and I think this is gonna go go. Th this is gonna go go. <laughs> this is going to go so so well if I play my cards right. Uh, I can even ask Jose for prep because Jose played doubles for a very long time. He evaluated my team. He saw the first five picks on Twitter and he was like, "Dude, that's monstrous." And then he saw my last five picks and he's like, "You completed that perfectly." So. I am extremely proud of this team. I hope you guys are too. I hope you like it. Uh, this, is, this is the Montreal Habsalls going into season, uh, not season two, but the second off season of the UPA uh, between season five and season six, I believe. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, if you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Remember to comment all the stuff that I asked you to comment. Check me out on Twitter, Facebook. Both are in the description down below. Uh, we will be uploading our battles for this offseason. I did not for the last one, but I will definitely be uploading them for this one. Be looking forward to uh, new thumbnails, new stuff like that. Uh, if you haven't been all around long enough to catch uh, my last, like, my last UPA season. That was the worst season of anything in my life. I got hacked out so hard. It happened in the off season as well a little bit uh, to the point where I just gave up and I didn't I didn't care anymore. Uh, I went two and zero, then I went two and two, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I don't I don't care. Um, it's just an off season. But this one I actually care about because it's a brand new uh, format to me. I have, by the way, guys, I have never ever once played doubles or VGC in my life. I've watched a lot of it and I have a lot of knowledge on it. However. I have no experience. I have never played in doubles, so if any of you guys have some tips, any ideas that you can uh, come up with for any one of these mons, uh, I know that you guys aren't going to see the matchups, but like if you can uh, point out a move that I might have missed, uh, definitely leave them in the comment section up, down below. And about Torn, if you figure out that uh, that cute move uh, that I was mentioning, then uh, definitely send it to me on Twitter, DM me. Uh, I think my DMs are open. If not, just, just at me, whatever. I'll tell you if it's right or wrong somehow. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed once again. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys later. Ciao!